Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Hello and welcome to the show. This is your host, JC Soto. Today we have coach, author, speaker, consultant, Debbie Monax, and she is uh, kind of a survivor of uh, MS. She was diagnosed back in 2000. In Despite that illness, she's been succeeding as a author, speaker in her business, her own business. And she also helped women with uh, endometriosis. I believe I've kind of pronounced that. I, I killed that pronunciation there. But uh, welcome to the show, Debbie. Oh, thank you, JC. I'm so happy to be here. Yes. Can you tell us a little more about what you do and how you help your clients, please? Oh, sure. Uh, I create. Um, supportive community for people who have been through similar situations where their life has gone off track. Um, They're not doing what they thought they would be doing and they're having emotions related to that. Um, And I help them get together. Um, We have twice monthly calls that we talk and discuss what's going on in their life. Um, Also, um, I have people journal their emotions. I think journaling is really effective to kind of identify what's going on with you at the time. Um, So that's kind of the start of of us working together. Okay. And when they come to you and they they want to find their way, what are the fears they bring with them? Um, A lot of people are afraid of... uh, kind of being different than others or having something go in in their life, go away that other people's lives haven't gone. Um, And so I kind of help them by, you know, helping them with the support of you're not alone and you're not the only one that this kind of thing has happened to. And that by dealing with those underlying emotions, we are able to heal and get through that and get past that. Um, And then I help them, you know, focus on what is the good things in your life? What are the things that bring you joy? And, um, and I help them that way because, you know, our brain or humans were wired, our brain is going to the negative. And if we can get away from that negative and go to the things that make us happy and joyful instead that will like bring our spirits up and and give us a lot more um, motivation to go continue through life. Yeah, you're right. We always kind of tend to just look almost all the time at what's wrong with our lives, what's not working the way we want it to work. Is that something that's really common with the people that come to see you? It is really common. It's, and I think it's just a human behavior that we, um, you know, we're trying to get to, a certain place we have an image in our mind of of what our expectations are. And so another part of that problem is your expectations are up here. You know, when realistically your life might be here, well, that doesn't mean your life is bad. It just means your expectations were too high. (laughs) And so that's a whole nother part of the problem too. Yeah. And they come with some beliefs also, some misconceptions. What are those? Can you share some of those with us? Um, some of them think um, I'm the only one that this has happened to. How could I possibly survive this? Um, you know, it's not fair. Why, why me? Why did that happen to me? Um, and the reality is really that, you know, sort of everybody in life has something go wrong or something that is a burden to them that they didn't expect. And so it's pretty normal and actually quite normal for for all different kinds of uh, roadblocks to happen in our lives. And so when you, you kind of get, you know, more comfortable with the fact that this is just a normal part of life, a very normal part of a normal life, that just helps by itself because now you're not out there feeling like you're just all alone. So that's, that's why we do the twice monthly calls because, um, you know, it's getting together with similar people or people that have similar obstacles in their life. And you get to kind of hear from them and find out the best resources, the best answers, you know, what 
are the things you can do right now to make your life more happy. Yeah. So everybody's going through something, right? Exactly. That's, that's a fact. Now, when you were diagnosed back in 2000, what helped you kind of work through that shocking news? Uh, you know, I, I honestly, um, I was at a prayer class last night and we were, um, looking at a, a scene of, uh, Jesus and the fishermen on the boat on the water and the storm had come and scared the disciples because the storm was really bad. And Jesus stood up and like calmed the storm. And this is a photo, a, a like painting of it. And so you see the clouds swirling around and you see the, the sea and the sea is completely calm and everything has calmed down. And when I meditated with that related to finding out I had MS, I um, all of a sudden felt really safe and really loved because um, I had been single a long time and I had just in the last few months before I got diagnosed, um, gotten engaged and so now had my fiance. So I had this diagnosis, but I had a partner now to share it with and to, you know, we were both on the internet looking up the symptoms and trying to understand what it is and what's going on. And then I had someone to come with me to my doctor's appointment. So I didn't have to face that kind of thing alone. And that to me was the blessing um, that I noticed at the time. Yeah. And loneliness is probably really uh, affect not only the state of mind, but actually the, the illness makes it even worse. Right. Um, I, yeah, I think stress in general, and I think loneliness keeps us stressed, you know, when we can be with, with people, family or friends, we can just be more uh, conversational and more relaxed. Um, I mean, the hardest thing with MS is that you have this unknown future that no one, you know, no one can tell you what that future is. Yeah. But um, so that's going from, a you know, maybe you think you control your life and you're doing some things right. But now you um, you're having to kind of make, you know, give up, make sure that you um, have some faith in your future of your life, even though you don't have facts that like tell you what it's going to be. Yes. And you talk about faith and also visualizing. Is that part of the process that you uh, implement with your clients to help them get better? Um, yeah, I think that that's a very valuable process. Um, because, you know, we have little pictures in our mind that we, that they're popping up and coming up when we have negative emotions or we're, you know, unable to move forward with our goals or what we want to succeed in. Um, and so visualizing a different picture, a better picture is something that is powerful. Okay. And you work with all both men and women, right? Or just women? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Do you find that men and women have or bring different challenges to you? For sure. Um, a lot of the, a lot of the challenges men have are more work focused or provide focused. Um, and they do have pressure in a different way than a lot of women, although women kind of do a lot of things. But um, so I, I just find that people are just in their life wherever they are and they, you know, they're dealing with something and then I can usually help them. Now, if someone is looking for a coach like yourself to help them get back on, on track, what are the things that you will recommend them to look for in that person, that coach? Oh, to look for in a coach? Yeah. Um, it's someone that you definitely feel warmth with and that you connect with. Um, so a coach has to be knowledgeable, has to be um, experienced at what type of problem you're working on. And as you know, I feel like I'm pretty experienced. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but mainly it's just, it's how you connect. And I think trying to, to interview and ask questions and just see how well you're connecting um, is a really good way to tell if you guys should work together. So having that experience, having gone through the same path helps a lot, right? Oh, for sure. For and sure. You, and, and you go and not only done the uh, MS 
Uh, you also uh, been on the other side, also running your business in the meantime and getting married. So you've been working from different angles, being a wife, oh, sure. being a, a business owner, you know, and being a, a patient. Yes. So that gave you different perspectives, right? Right. And before, um, well, somewhere along my MS journey is when I got disabled and I stopped working. But before that, I had a 16-year career as a CPA. And so I was working in corporate America and um, doing doing well with that. But that was something that MS affected me, and I couldn't do that anymore. Couldn't do that kind of detailed work anymore. So, um, so yeah, I have I have a lot of experience that I bring to the table. Yeah, and what was the spark that kind of propelled you to become a coach and help people out? That people that you see that were in the same path that you were once walked. Well, what. What really drew me to the whole concept was I had felt so alone at times, you know, in the process, all the different things that have happened. I would feel like, gosh, I'm like the only one that is this has ever happened to. And it was so hard to go searching for the resources and go out on the web and look for things and talk to people and try to ask around Mm -hmm. to get information And I just, you know, I wrote my book because I wanted to share my story and let people know that had a similar circumstance as me, that they're not alone, that other people are out there and that other people really care about them. So um, that that just kind of led into that my coaching business is that way, too, because, you know, if someone you have a mentor or someone to link arms with, you know, to walk with you when you're going forward in, in life, um, that just helps you. And that just helps you get, you know, identify your emotions and then, and then work on how you heal them so that you can move on and, and come up with what is, you know, what is my purpose of my life? Why do I, what do I want to really achieve next? What do I want to do next? And a lot of people, a lot of it is the family, you know, I want to be with family. I want to, you know, make sure that, that I'm with my kids and my husband and I spend time together. Um, those are all good, good things to want and to have that be your purpose. So, yeah. So do you find that having the family involved in that process also speeds up the process? Um, for sure it does. And, uh, you know, I know families are busy and everybody's got things going on. So it's not a pressure thing. It's not like, you know, someone has to stay home now and work on this with you. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but together, you know, you can keep, keep your family, you know, having conversations and keep the, the flow going um, so that you can heal from you know, whatever is going on at the moment and problem solve. So, I mean, I know my husband helped a lot with me just kind of figuring out what possible solutions could I have. And he would just help put that stuff together for me. And so he was my help in that way. So it's more of a holistic plan because you you work not only with the person physically, but they have to work inside their minds, their behavior, and also who's around them, the community, the, the family, the friends, everything right. that involves a person, right? Right. Now, you mentioned your book. Can you tell us a little more about what the book is about and the title? Oh, sure. The book is Woman Plans, God Laughs, um, My Story of Love Loss and Learning to Live Life with Faith. And it's in the memoir format, and it just has a little it has bits and pieces about my life at different times, but it's covering my my big stories of getting MS and um, having infertility and having my daughter early. She was um, premature, and so I had her at 32 weeks um, of pregnancy, and she was tiny. So that's just all part of my story. And and like you were saying, it's perseverance. It's getting through it. It's you know figuring out, well, how do I solve this problem? What's the next step to take? And that's what my story is like. And so that's what my book is. Now, Perseverance, what did you learn that? How did that start in your life? Boy, that's a good question. I don't even know. I mean, I would say I was, um, you know, I was the oldest of four kids, and I wanted to please my parents. 
And I kind of caught on pretty fast that if I, if I didn't give up, then it usually pleased them. <laughs> so <laughs> I think I'm hardwired that, you know, like I have to stop fretting and just solve the problem. <laughs> and, and that's what you learned when you were a kid. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. I, I think that was kind of a lot of things in my life were that way. Can you give us an example of how you use that? How do you apply that today to your business? Um, Because I know I've seen you, you're pretty persistent. I saw you breaking that board uh, with a karate <laughs> hit, and uh, you went at it until you got it done. So I know that's the way you are. Yeah. How do you apply that yeah. to the rest of your or your life or your mainly your business? Well, I think um, it's an interesting story. My husband would say that, you know, my book came out and I should have been working on this part of my business that I'm talking to you about now for, you know, a year and a half. <laughs> and I would say, well, at least I am now. <laughs> so I'm coming back and I'm being persistent. I'm not giving up. So that's, I guess, a little bit of just the way I am. No. And I believe in, I believe in right timing and flow and, and things come together at the right time. So I, I try to notice that in my own life and just see, oh, maybe that's a little hint that I should kind of move in this direction. and. And I follow that intuition a lot. Sometimes timing is very, very, very important in life. Oh, like, very much so. Out of your clients that you had and that you work with, can you give us an example of somebody that started really you know, confused, not knowing how to move forward, and you kind of took them along and helped them get out of that path and start moving forward again? Um, they... I mean, without sharing, I don't want to have privacy concerns or anything like yeah. that. But, mm -hmm. um, but I, I just know that there's people that have had similar journeys as me with MS, and um, and they are kind of at a loss as to how to live their life, how to be happy. And um, and what I've been able to do with them is work together and find out you know, the details, what makes you unhappy? Why are, what makes you happy? Why are you, you know, struggling? What is the struggle? And to the extent I can help them with what the struggle is, I, I do. And then also just helping them really notice then the happy things and the things that make them happy, you know, pleased. And so a lot of that is, is connecting with your friends, you know, going to um, social events, things that where you're going to talk to more than one person and um, get out of your shell kind of thing. And that, that has been very successful with um, the joy that they can experience in their day-to-day -day life. Okay. And can you give us maybe three, five tips? I know you, you mentioned get together with friends and family and get out of your, your shell. And can you give them more tips, maybe a group of tips that we can apply to our lives and uh, when we are wondering how to move forward again? Um. Well, I think your thoughts are really important. So you want to keep, um, be aware, stay aware of what you're thinking and what your thoughts are. So sometimes your thinking is a dead end. You're, you're going, well, that figures that happened to me. That always happens to me. Okay. That's a negative thought. <laughs> let's <laughs> that's a, uh, let's that's kind of back time. this up and say, um, what else could you think? You know, um, but sometimes things go bad. Sometimes I have trouble with things in my life, but it's not all the time. And sometimes things go good. So, you know, you, you got to focus in on turning those thoughts into positive thoughts. Um, I'm a believer in journaling. Uh, that's a big coping skill that I used when I was going through everything. Um, but I, I'm a writer. I like to write. So I would just keep a journal of my emotions. And then, of course, you're not telling anyone in your journal. You can say whatever you want. <laughs> so it's a safe place to vent or, you know, complain or whatever you need to do. But I find that when you go back and you reread that stuff, you get a lot of intuition and you get ideas of, of different ways to go about whatever the problem is. So um, so that's a good thing. Um, And then I, I support groups are great. So that's why I'm saying the, the month, twice monthly meetings are, is a way to have supportive, like kind people to talk to 
and to lean on and, you know, get their ideas when you don't have any more ideas. So that's, that's a big thing that I do. Um, and I might need to, you to ask me again. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was asking about tips. Uh, you said, you know, watch your thinking because we allow our minds to run unchecked. You know, we have all this negative thinking and probably socialize, get together with people, the community benefit of being in the community, a group of people of similar thinking. Um, and you said journaling helps a lot mm -hmm. that we get some insights after we go back to those notes and take a look at them and reread re them without all the uh, negative sometimes emotion that we have when we first wrote them. Mm -hmm. So those are great, great tips. I think that will help people to get out because uh, I think uh, we get into a, a rut sometimes. And uh, even though we know this stuff, we tend to just, okay, this is not the way I'm supposed to be doing it. I know better than this. So that's right. Not, you might I, catch yourself even if you can't change it, like, yeah. but you'll notice, oh, wait, I'm in a funk today. This is not right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I think my, you know, the fourth thing I would say is um, that I get a lot of support from um, spirituality. And so when I would make sure I, I went to church every week and, um, that just made me feel less alone. I just felt like um, close to God and I felt less alone. And, um, and I, I got a lot of wisdom from that and a lot of my intuition and, and encouragement of what to do next from, from being in a community like that. Yeah. So I would definitely encourage things like that. So Debbie, if someone wants to get a hold of you, they want to contact you, they want to see your book, buy your book, How can they do that? How can they contact you, find your book, maybe get a, some kind of consultation? How can they do that? Um, the easiest way to, to get on, um, send me your email and get on my list is to um, go to my website, and it's Debbie, with one B, D-E-B-I-E, monax.com, forward slash contact And there's a form to fill out. And if you fill that out, I will send you um, for free a chapter of my book, um, chapter six, which is The Miracle of Sierra. So it's a pretty uplifting chapter. And, um, and then my book is on Amazon. So you can just look for Woman Plans, God Laughs on Amazon. All righty. To my listeners, all her info is going to be just below this recording. Debbie, thank you for being here and sharing all that great info with us. Appreciate it. You're welcome, JC. Thanks for having me. And thank you, everybody else, for tuning in and listening to Debbie Monax. Her book, like she said, is on Amazon, and I really highly recommend her. Until next time, this is JC Soto for Online Media 360. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye now. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.